Um, so let's get started, everybody. Today I am going to talk about African faces. Um, I don't do all a, a lot of them because I don't see a lot of them. So if you want to submit your work for critique and you don't know how to get it critiqued, if you're new to my YouTube channel and you've only ever met me through my YouTube channel, well, I run the entire YouTube channel through Reddit. So if you go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon here, it'll take you straight to my Reddit. And this is my subreddit here. I've got two announcements pinged, uh, pinned at the top. One of them is the Community Design Challenge, which is, uh, um, the theme is floral humanoids. It's kind of like a spring challenge. You basically have to um, uh, design a character um, that embodies one or two flowers. And these are su the submissions so far. I think they look phenomenal. Like, look at this Venus flytrap. Wow. And um, I like the silhouettes for these. Some of them are kind of missing the point. Um, some of them are only like standing character designs. I want to see stuff incorporated together. So one example, I mean, you guys have very little time if you're starting it now. But one example I showed you guys a little while ago if I can find it on my desktop of never-ending thumbnails. Damn it. All right, I'm out of time to look for it. I'm not going to find it in time. Uh, but basically, it was a, it's, it's in one of the previous videos. Uh, but basically, it's a character that's made of the flower. So remember, a floral humanoid is made of the flower. Uh, they are the flower. They're not cosplaying as the flower. They don't um, uh, have human features with, co with with floral costume. They are the flower. So there is a, a, a reason behind these community challenges, and that is to create a workplace environment for you. Let's say you worked for DreamWorks one day, and there was an entire movie about floral people, floral people's... Um, a certain theme or something like that and you were part of that team they wouldn't accept your little cosplay design that's not what they want what they want is that uh, the feeling that the character is made out of the flower so it's not necessary that they even have bones they might be just a, a you know have you ever seen lettuce how it's just one layer of lettuce wrapped in another layer of lettuce and it's just made out of that well you know, if I was designing a floral humanoid, that's what I'd do. I'd, I'd think about the layers of anatomy that are floral anatomy, organic anatomy, um, and like all that herbaceous pattern, that organic herbaceousness that defines uh, when, you know, the, the, the silhouette of a flower. And then insert the, the humanoid aspect to it. So these aren't just, you know, willy-nilly little cosplay character designs that I'm asking for. I'm helping you put yourself in a workplace environment where you're designing functional characters. And the winners, uh, the winner, uh, and the rewards are, um, they're pretty big rewards, which is why, you know, that I want you guys to take challenges like these seriously, because there is an incentive, and the incentive is to just educational material so you're getting even more leveling up so the winner gets a, um, a portfolio review with me a free sit-in portfolio review um, they get a chance to, to get on call with me on the day that I critique these or another critique hour um, and they get a portrait studio copy they get all my brushes for free um, and I might might add if uh, if I am you know if in the future challenges I might add a free masterclass on top of that like whatever I can add that from my store to help reward you guys for the hard work but but you know I don't get anything out of that um, this, these community challenges are all about you guys um, but yeah have a look at that and then speaking of my masterclass it will be released June. First, um, it is done, ready to go. It just needs a couple of editing passes, um, and it is ready to be packaged and shipped out to you guys uh, through Gumroad. Um, and uh, I hope you guys like it. It's it's a very thorough examination of portraiture outside of reference. It's a 14-day challenge companion class. It is everything that you need to know about reading your references properly, meaning that it's the foundation knowledge before you enter referencing the unit. 
in your journey. Um, it is a, a just the a, the a well of information, everything that I've learned in my years, and it's, I took a while to make it because I wanted to make it only when I felt like I had a lot of experience teaching and I've been doing private tutoring since 2015. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's a lot of experience behind that process and I hope you guys find it educational. I hope it, it, it caters to a lot of different types of learning, technical list lovers and visual and, and diagram lovers and all of that. So I hope it's helpful. And that's it for announcements. Portrait Studio is available on my store. The price will go back to normal as soon as the masterclass is out. Brushes and everything you see me use is on my store. Masterclass will be linked to from my store uh, to Gumroad, but it will all be available on my store. Uh, so <clears throat> what's happened here is that you've darkened the eyes, darkened the background, and darkened the skin. The reason why we want to change the light environment has nothing to do with the skin tone. It's that so we can appreciate the way highlights work on African skin tone. And from what I understand, this is your day one. So this is really well done. Um, I'm not sure if this is a he or a she. Um, I always just turn it into a she. Just in, you know, That's just the default. The next thing I'm going to do is just make the whites of the eyes brighter. Or you can leave them like this. It looks like a cool psychic seer character but in my master class I also cover how basically the five shades of five was it five or four I think four main shades of skin tone uh, so it is a color tutorial as well and one of them is African skin tone and I go pretty much in depth on how to swatch for African skin tone etc um, but uh, for now I'll just cover this particular uh, grayscale version so Doing that, I'm going to duplicate the white layer for the for the eye whites and then show you where you were before. Now, what was wrong? What was going on? Is he the bringer of the night? <clears throat> uh, it looks a bit male to me from zoomed out just because of the neckline, um, but uh, also the missing eyebrows, but it could, it could also read as female because of the lips and the shape of the lips. So again, take a look at the background value, which you've just, um, you know, made too dark, and the eye whites. So after that, what I'm going to do is um, just soften the edges of that lasso I did, or not lasso, the, the adjustment. So how, what makes African skin, what makes it, what breaks it? Uh, so when you overdo the highlights, it ends up looking a little bit weird, like plasticky. Skin is a fine balance between matte and gloss, um, and it should not take a complete ejection out of the palette of what defines African in order for you to pull off some kind, look at that before, some kind of realistic read. So I'm just going to duplicate that one more time. And then I'm going to place in the specular highlight. So this is the best way to manage your highlights is to go as far as possible, as far as you can with highlights so you have a reference point. And the reference, reference point here is the specular highlight because that's the widest point on the skin. It doesn't get any wider than that. Anywhere, either on white skin, on Mediterranean, uh, or Middle Eastern, uh, Asian, and African. The whites, the specular highlights, is the widest point on the skin because it's a pure reflection of light on the face. So one thing that's happening is that because you're studying an African skin tone, you've lost your edges. And I can see how that happens, but we don't lose skin folds just because we're studying African skin tone. So reestablish your edges as you need them, meaning find the lower eyelid, find the upper eyelid. Place what you need to place and wear. Usually around the eyes are the glossiest points where we get the most gloss happening. And anywhere outside of the uh, 
kind of like the accompanying mid-tones around a highlight. Anywhere outside of those, we get the darker mid-tones. So you really only get shadow, dark, dark mid-tones, um, immediate outside highlight mid-tones, and highlights when it comes to African skin tones. You don't get that mid-ground mid-tone that you get with Mediterranean or white skin. And then um, I'm going to just start talking about where highlights go. So I helped find some edges here. And then this is what highlights do on dark skin, on dark anything. They just spike up out of nowhere. Um, so, so anywhere you usually have highlights, you're pretty much just skipping the introductory mid-tone. So you know how if you're painting medium skin, you have an introductory mid-tone before you start doing the highlight? Well, you skip that. And you just go straight for the highlight line. And that's how you make it look more realistic. But all you really want to do, again, is just find those points where you either have wetness or that extreme climb and just let yourself, let your brush fearlessly climb to that value. Anywhere where we are getting a lot of light, like a beam of light, then we're going to get that extreme uh, climb in the value. And then I'm going to reduce and lower the amount of space for the um, upper eyelid. Because again, that hooded eye is the defining feature for African eyes. But it is definitely a, a challenge to paint darker skin tone because you are doing things that you have trained yourself not to do, which is value share and rely on contrast, but you are doing just those two things for the majority of the time. So I'm gonna strengthen this edge right here. There's no reason why values need to melt together for African tones. Over blending, all of that stuff is not necessary. It's really just the tone stuff value sharing, etc., that we want to avoid. And we minimize mid-tones. So African skin tones have minimized mid-tones. They have more shadows and more highlights. Write that back. They also value share a lot. So back to that pigmentation thing. So what I'm going to do is just blend away at the mouth a little bit. And then try to show where that lip kind of bumps in and then introduce some more pigmentation. So I did the eye circles and I'm just going to do a little bit more around the mouth and some of the shine which is the hot air from your nose creating condensation in the space around your upper lip that creates this extra level the sheen the reflectivity slider on portrait studio is raised up around this area and remember how do you paint african skin tone and keep the resolution high just don't delete your edges their edges are still very much there if you don't know your edges then you have no business painting complex skin tones especially in color and then I'm going to follow up with the shadow line of the lips overlapping. And where you get shadow, where you get darkness, you get darkness. So make sure that if you're going to use black on the dark spots, don't be shy. Because you are, all, you are relying on the dark spots around the face, the six dark spots, to pull through that lack of edges you have here. So same thing here. Trust the edge of the nostrils. You have zero distinction between darker mid-tone or mid-tone relative to. And when I say mid-tone, I don't mean general mid-tone relative to this. I mean mid-tone. This is mid-tone for me. In my brain, when I say mid-tone, I'm referencing this value. Mid-tone, right in the middle, mid-tone. Um, we don't get any of these on African skin tone. We get these. Um, and then a sudden spike into that. So you're getting a majority of this and then boom, like you just get this all of a sudden, just like we have right here. And then the neck. The neck is why she looks a little bit androgynous or he or they look a little bit androgynous. And that's because females have a less wide 
necklace. One of my students today asked me, how do I know? Find the corner of the eye. That's a good reference point, this right here. Find the corner of the eye along that line. You want to just pull the neck. The more overweight they are, obviously, the more um, wide the neck. But I want you to notice that when you're overweight, like I'm talking about like 300, 400 pounds, I'm not fat shaming, so please don't even, um, is you kind of get more androgynous. So you get less of that femininity if you're an overweight female. Um, you get that loss of femininity just because of the neckline. That's how much the neckline carries in that uh, in that body type, in, in, the, in the read of the female body. So this is neither African or, or, or Caucasian or whatever you might want to call it. This is just human anatomy. It has nothing to do with what race you are. So the more overweight a character is, the more androgynous they look because you miss out on that triangular shape of beauty on the face. My density is too high, no wonder. And um, there's a lot of stuff I want to cover, like the cheekbone, the, the rim light, but I'm running out of time, but I hope it's covered a lot already. Value share, please, when you're painting African skin tone. And... Um, uh, 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 there's really no mid-tone highlighter. There's shadow mid-tones and then there's the highlighter. Um, so before, after, so you had, it. you just, you just, what is this? It's a ghost. You had no edges. You had no definition. The eyes white, the eye whites were just non-existent. Um, uh, nice shape to the beauty. Definitely the mouth is beautiful. I love the mouth shape. The eyes are beautiful, symmetrical, but obviously now we have more edges, uh, we have more resolution, we have more detail, and then we have real African skin tone. We're looking at real African skin. Um, and one thing I like to do is I get like a textured uh, uh, leaf brush of some kind. Uh, I think it's this one. And I, in a new layer, grab my white and just kind of let it do its thing and then just delete away at some with some kind of maybe the same brush delete with it and uh, so i get this texture left behind on the skin tone because highlights reveal texture and then i just follow up with a quick soft brush just so we can get those pores to come out and then i'll merge it down and sharpen because it's it's part of it it's part of African skin tone that the texture is revealed and you can do that same effect on the nose anywhere around the face just to get that realism African lips also have really defined lip wrinkles but you know me with red lip wrinkles you're not allowed to detail the lips because it's extremely destructive to the structure of the lips we don't really notice these details but sometimes we will get like these little balls of elevation in the lips, like changes in the lips um, that do require, because they're more full, they do require a little bit of extra definition. So again, you don't know how to create edges right now. You're not, your edge work is weak. Your contrast is weak. Your light environment is weak. Um, your detailing and contrast understanding is weak. You're not working with, a, you're, you're outlining the eye, you're drawing symbolically. Um, this is a lot of stuff that you're doing wrong. And um, yeah, you're gonna have to find a way to uh, to work with that and learn how to paint a, an African skin tone, which is a challenge even for me. So I recommend paint the mid-tone, paint the Indian, Middle Eastern, Mediterranean tone, perfect that, learn your edges, and then go from there and then study the African skin tone and the pure pale uh, uh, Asian skin tone, I mean Caucasian skin tone. Before, after. So thank you everyone for coming. If you guys enjoyed today's, any questions by the way, uh, members of the stream, uh, but if you guys want to submit your work for critique hour, go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon here. Please have a quick look through our community challenge. It's really fun. 
Uh, Portrait Studio will uh, will go off sale as soon as my master class is out. My master class actually covers a lot of this stuff. Um, I basically talk about how to pick tones for African skin tone, Caucasian, Middle Eastern, um, and um, it's just basically a full go-to portrait tutorial. Who's it, who's gonna grab it? What do you think the price should be for something like that? Uh, please comment on the on the video if you can. Let me know what you think um, about the price. Uh, the price might be at eighty dollars. Do you believe that's fair? Um, and uh, remember that it's four hours of footage, um, a full uh, written by me, by yours truly, seven thousand at least. I believe it's at eight thousand now. Uh, words of notes taken, uh, lists, diagrams, templates. Um, basically, I have pre-made templates for you to get you know, a little kickstart for the tutorial if you wanted to paint alongside it. I have a self-critique segment um, and, uh, of course, the, the grayscale, the color. Um, so, uh, so it's a lot. And um, do you feel like $80 is a fair price? It'll be released June 1st. I hope you guys find it useful, uh, but the release will not be delayed. It will be released on June 1st, um, but I hope that, uh, you know, it is what you guys are looking for, and uh, it's a nice little organized way to get the information needed, because I know a lot of you, when you look through my video history, you're like, whoa, this is a lot of information. I wish it was all compact and placed somewhere neatly so I can access it when I need it at no reduction of the quality. Um, that's what I am, that's my mission statement with the master study, master class. And um, yeah, what do you guys think of that? Please do let me know. And um, yeah, if you want to support the channel, if you learned something today, please, please consider being a $1 patron. That's just $1 a person a month. Um, so if you think somebody else will do it, mm, they most likely won't and then nobody ends up joining. My goal is a thousand patrons at a dollar by the end of this year. Oh, and uh, please consider joining streams. They're free and meaning that you get to see the full class before it's edited. So on Twitch, if you click right here, the little Twitch icon, uh, you can watch classes uh, on Twitch for free if you have the time at 5 p.m. Eastern in your time zone, if you could hop in on Twitch and watch the class. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Bye.